aggressive with a little bit of dance feel good it's good with a little bit of dance feel good it's good with a little bit of dance feel good that good with a little bit of dance feel good that good with a little bit of dance what up what up it's garage gym homie baby and today we're going over step five of the 12 steps is it worth it before we get into this here please click the subscribe button i got content coming out all the dang time for you man so click subscribe and let's get into this man let's get right into this um I did a series so far. I've done step one, two, three, and four. Obviously, I'm on five now, and I've already done one out of order on step nine. I might go go back after the series and, and do it again because there's so much. There's no way I could get everything about step five in this video or everything about, you know, there's always things I miss. And this big book, this AA big book here that we're talking about is, uh, you know, it's the text of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. So the first hundred people who recovered from alcoholism got together and they wrote this book uh, sharing their experience, hoping that we too can recover. So if we do what they did, we'll get what they got. So when they say the word we throughout the book, a lot of people think they're talking about you and me, you know, us, all of us alcoholics. We is not us. We is the first 100. So, so that's what they did. Um, so step five says admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. So there's a, this chapter, chapter six, Into Action, in the AA Big Book starts on 72, and that's where step five starts. And there is a lot of, I don't care if you're an alcoholic addict or not, there is deep spiritual wisdom in this book that can benefit all. So don't, don't turn it off if you're not an alcoholic. So we've now made our inventory. We went down and we listed in black and white in front of us the deepest, darkest things ever. We started with our resentments. Whom were we resentful towards? Um, principles, people, and institutions. All the people that we've been angry, that we held a grudge against. We listed why we were angry. Why, why do we resent this person? This, this girl cheated on me, da-da-da. We listed a third column of how it affected us. And then we listed the fourth column of uh, what our part was in this. So where, where were we to blame? And that we came to realize that we had a part in every single thing. And if we want to master these resentments, we have to stop looking out at everybody else. And finally, for the first time in my life, take a look within myself. Then we listed our fears, black and white, right before us, and our sex inventory. So we have some deep, dark stuff because we went through our whole life and we listed out on paper uh, all this all this stuff. And you, you probably heard the uh, saying, uh, secrets keep you sick. So now what do we do? It says, having made our personal inventory, what shall we do about it? We have been trying to get a new attitude, a new relationship with our creator and discover the obstacles in our path. We have admitted certain defects. We have ascertained in a rough way what the trouble is. We have put our finger on the weak items in our personal inventory. Now these are about to be cast out. This um, requires action on our part, which when completed will mean that we have admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our defects. This brings us to the fifth step in the program of recovery. So look, man, I'm going to give it to you straight right here. God's number one. We've discovered that right now already, I mean, in uh, through this uh, spiritual process, that God's number one. However, we have to have one human lifeline that we can tell anything to. You know, it's like if I'm a doctor, which I'm not, YouTube, uh and I, and you have cancer, and I go in there, and I say, hey, 
sponsee, whatever, whoever you are, you have cancer and I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove every single cancer cell, but I'm going to leave that cancer cell right there. That's going to be the one that kills you, man. So I always tell people when I sponsor them, if you don't feel like you can tell me everything, everything, I don't, the deepest, darkest thing you have, then I'm not the right sponsor for you. Because this is not about, oh, I need to hear, this is about saving your life. You know, and we need to do this one time, and we don't ever have to do this again. This fourth step, this fifth step, this inventory, there's nothing in the book that says, oh, we go back every year and do a fourth and fifth step. This is a one-time shot to clear out all this stuff from the past. And then... If you're doing it right, you're dealing with things as they come in so they don't build up again. Because if we don't deal with things as they come in after this, we don't know if we're ever going to even make it back if this thing goes untreated to even do this again. So this is a one I tell this is a one time thing. So you better be thorough and honest and put your heart and soul into this and know that this is it. And you can trust me with anything. And, you know, so the other thing I'll say is um, I've sponsored people, man, and they, writ, they, they wrote out 50 pages, 100 pages, and they ended up relapsing because they ended up holding back the deepest, darkest thing that they wanted to go to the grave with. And that ended up taking them back out. I've seen people do one page and they put it all out there, man, and did it from the heart and let trusted God. So the length doesn't matter. And that's why in the book it says um, we went back through our lives. Nothing counted but thoroughness and honesty. But it says right here in the book, man, right in black and white in front of us, it says, let's see, the best reason first, if we skip this vital step, we may not overcome drinking. <laughs> That's it, man. It's pretty, it's pretty plain right in front of us. The reason to do this is the most important reason. If we don't do this, we might not overcome drinking. So I'd say that's a pretty good reason right there to do it. And so... Now we pick the person. Who's it going to be with? For me, it was a no-brainer. It was going to be my sponsor. I've sponsored women before. I, every situation's different, you know, and God guides us through, and that's what AA is about. I've sponsored a, a woman before, for example, and I took her through the steps, and when it came time to do the fifth step, she was more comfortable with some of the really dark, deep stuff. There's nothing in the book that says men sponsor men and women sponsor women. I'm here to help anybody who's willing. You know, that, that's my purpose. So I've sponsored women, and that's really an honor, especially after the way I've treated women. And so, like, when it came time for the fifth step, she had another woman listen to her inventory, you know, in that one particular case. I've done other fifth steps with women, you know, I haven't done a ton of them uh, with women, but I think one, she, the woman went to another uh, person who was a woman because she was more comfortable with that, and that was completely fine. And then the other one, um, you know, uh, I heard the fifth step, and it was an honor. And um, so, eat, you know, God guides us through what the right thing is for each situation. That's always number one, you know, and that's real AA, you know, that God first. Um, and if we listen to that and we follow that, then everything else will line up. So now I pick the person. I have my sponsor, man. And in my case, I was six weeks sober and I had finished my inventory. Some people move quicker than that. Some people move slower. But you want to move through as quick as possible because this thing's trying to kill me. So I, I got my inventory now. I've wrote out a lot of stuff. I got 100 pages. And my sponsor came over, man, to my dad's house where I was living at the time, six weeks sober. 
And I was anxious, man. I was nervous. And good sponsorship is very important because of what I'm about to tell you. We sat there, man, and I was like not even the same person, man. I'm blowing the vape pen while I'm doing this uh, <laughs> fifth step, you know, blowing, not even being mindful that I'm blowing this vape out in there. Like, uh, you know, I'm just not even uh, six weeks sober, man, coming out of a heroin and meth addiction. And I'm thinking like, man, I mean, the first thing is I start reading him my resentments. And I start reading him how it affects me. And the first thing that I said, the first line of my resentments, I said what it was, you know, was it my day or whatever. And he said, how about, and I read how it affects me. He said, how about fear? And I'm like, oh, okay, fear. Yeah, I definitely was in fear there. He goes, write it down. So I wrote it down. The second one, I say what the resentment was. I say uh, why I was resentful. I say how it affected me, my part. He goes, how about fear? Was there fear there? I say, yeah, there was fear there. So wrote it down. I realized I went through my entire fourth step without writing the word fear once. And in the fifth step is when I discovered how fear touched every single part of my life and how it shot through the fabric of my existence like an evil and corroded threat, just like the book says. And that's why good sponsorship's important because it's always God first. But the reason we do this, it's not only that I'm doing my fifth step, I'm also completing my fourth step with my sponsor. We're basically together completing the fourth step, making sure that no stone is left unturned. This is so important. And now, because of that experience, I'm able to sit there with a, someone I'm sponsoring and point out, how about fear? Oh, yeah, fear, and they write it down. And I've had that experience. I mean, I've done 100 fifth steps with people, and, um, and I'm able to be the kind of, the kind of sponsor that, that I had. And it says it right here. It says they had not learned enough on 73. They had not learned enough of humility, fearlessness, and honesty in the sense we find it necessary until they told someone else, all their life story. It's telling us right here, basically, we can't recover from alcoholism or addiction, this illness, until I tell someone my entire life story. It's telling me right there. So this is very important. And so, you know, it talks about how the alcoholic lives a double life. And I'm sitting there with my sponsor, man, thinking that I'm just I'm just blowing his mind, right? But I'm not, you know, there's nothing I say, you know, I'm telling him about the porn industry and uh, the horrible things that I did to people and the drug use and uh, the way I've treated people, mistreated people, robbed people, this, that, everything, man, was, was put out on the table. I walked away, I know in my heart that I put it all out there. Now, let me say this. There were things I missed on my fourth and fifth step, but I went back later and addressed them. It wasn't that I missed them because I was hiding secrets. My motives were good. It's just because so much stuff happened in my life and my brain was still cloudy, but I was thorough and I was honest. So if you're thorough and honest, you know, your motives are what matters. You're going to miss some stuff, maybe. I went back years later. I missed the fact of how I abandoned a dog and I had to go make amends. I made a whole video about this and I ended up finding out where the dog went. It was a crazy godly story. And so, you know, we went through this and uh, I sat there for hours, man. We're prepared for a long, and I'm thinking, I'm in my head, of course, you know, like, man, he probably wants to go home. Man, he was like, we're going to sit here till this is done. He sat there and listened, and I thanked him after, 
And he was like, no, thank you. He thanked me. He's like, you'll understand one day. I'm thank I thank you for this. And I understand now because for me to sit on the other end of the table now. So the fifth step, we're just talking about the one side where I'm the one spilling my guts with my inventory. But the other part of it is being the person listening and what an honor that is that somebody would trust me. Now, a hundred people trust me. I've sponsored hundreds that they would sit there and share the deepest, darkest, see, I'm fired up, man, darkest things in their lives with me. I mean, what an honor after how I abused people's trust and how I uh, treated people like, 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 like they were dispensable. And, and to be the person on the other side of it, this is an opportunity you're not going to want to miss, I promise you. And so um, the last part of the fifth step, and this is the part a lot of people miss, and this is such an important part. After you spill your guts and you do the inventory, listen to this. It says, first of all, well, this is here. Every step has promises. Some Every step has good promises, and every step has bad promises. A lot of people don't know that. So the good promises are what you want, what happens when you complete the step. The bad promises are what happens when you don't complete the step. So here's the promises for the fifth step. Listen to this. This is freaking very appealing. We pocket our pride and go to it, illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of the past. This is on 75. Once we have taken this step, here's the promises, withholding nothing. Only These promises only happen if you withhold nothing. We are delighted. We can look the world in the eye. We can be alone at perfect peace and ease. Our fears fall from us. We begin to feel the nearness of our creator. We may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have a spiritual experience. Wow. The feeling that the drink problem has disappeared will often come strongly. We feel we are on the broad highway. Broad highway is capitalized. That means God. Walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. Now those are the fifth step promises. Those, that's what happens. We can look the world in the eye. We can be alone at perfect peace and ease. That's freaking deep, man. So listen, you could tell when I'm talking about these steps, I get fired up, man. I feel the power of God flow through me. And I'm going to tell you this. If you're talking about these steps and you don't feel fired up, there's something missing, man. When you're talking about things you're passionate about, you got to feel the words. Here's the last part. And this is why this is so important. A lot of people just do the fifth step and they don't complete it with this right here. This is life-changing potentially. Returning home, we find a place where we can be quiet for an hour, carefully reviewing what we have done. So I tell people, when we do this fifth step, you need to have an hour after to be alone. That's part of the step. The fifth step, well, you don't just share the inventory and you're done. Returning home, we find a place where we can be quiet for an hour. This is on 75. Carefully reviewing what we have done. We thank God from the bottom of our heart that we know him better. So that's the first thing. God, thank you that I now know you better. Taking this book down from our shelf, we turn to the page which contains the 12 steps. That's in how it works. Hopefully this book isn't on your shelf. Hopefully you are. You got it with you. Uh, carefully reading the first five proposals, we asked if we have omitted anything. For we are building an ark through which we shall walk a free man at last. Is our work solid so far? Are the stones properly in place? 
Have we skimped on the cement put into the foundation? Have we tried to make mortar without sand? Then, if we can answer to our satisfaction, we then look at step six. We have to go through these questions and decide, have we left anything out? Anything. I've had sponsees multiple times do this. Sat at home, called me after, and said, I left something out. I want to tell you about it. I didn't include. Because they asked, they thank God, and they looked deep in their heart and went over if they missed anything. That's why you don't want to miss this. If they didn't do that, we would have just moved right on to step six. And that could have killed them. That secret, what they weren't willing to disclose, could have been the thing to take them out. The resentment that destroys us. The fear. What, the dishonesty, which is fear anyway. Whatever it is. So this step is deep, man. This is where I learned about all the fear that I had. This is where I completed the fourth step. This is where I sat there and got everything. I had one human lifeline. After God, I had one human lifeline. That was my sponsor, and I put it all out there, man. So you don't want to miss this, man. God takes us through this. No matter how scared you are, you remember when you did step three, that you made a contract with God that you were going to do the rest of the steps at once. And God carries us through this. That's what I got for you, man. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button. God bless all of you.